14th attack in two hours. Gallagher, this one will have to abort. Pilot the navigator. We are heading back to England. We'll drop our bombs in the channel. Navigator to pilot. Heading 276, sir. Understand 276. Fire flares. We're turning around. Roger. <laughs> They wouldn't be turning back if they didn't have an impossible situation up there. All right. Operator, put me through to wing headquarters, General Britt, and scramble it. Colonel, General Britt's here. Cancel that call. General, I was just calling you. Captain Bates show up yet? Captain Bates? Bates, the new weather officer. Weather. Sir, I'm afraid we pulled a big boner today. What happened? Do you recall what our weather section promised us for the raid on Kiel today? Five tenths cloud cover, intermittent visibility over the target. Yes, sir, but they were just a bit inaccurate. It happened to be total cloud cover. Here's an in-flight report from my group. Couldn't see the target, couldn't bomb. Losses bad? Whatever they were, they were for nothing. Sir, Keel was just too far to fly without being sure of the weather. Gotta knock out those yards. Yes. Well, a few more tries like today with this half-baked weather guesswork. And it'll do what the Luftwaffe couldn't do. It's gonna knock out our striking force. We may be taking some of the guesswork out of it, Joe. This uh, new weather expert, Captain Bates, came out to meet with us. Due here now, as a matter of fact. Another expert? Just came over from Washington. Meteorological professor at UIT. They're studying new techniques. Well, if he just gets rid of the old technique, it may help. Captain Bates is here, sir. All right, Harvey, send him in. It isn't only just the weather, Joe. We're feeling our way in almost every area. I realize that, sir, but I hope we're not going to hang ourselves with more of this theoretical nonsense. Captain Bates, Colonel Gallagher. He uh, wasn't expecting a woman. Why not, sir? We're very clever at theoretical nonsense. If you're going to throw me out, sir, get a good grip. Captain, your arrival is well timed. My mission is on its way back. You'll have a chance to see what a bad weather forecast can do to a pretty good bomb group. Clock High, a QM production, starring Paul Burke, also starring Chris Robinson and Frank Overton, with guest stars Dina Merrill, Andrew Duggan. Tonight's episode, Which Way the Wind Blows. systems don't just bounce around the heavens willy-nilly. They develop into lines, fronts, and patterns that move in a definite direction and develop measurable forces. Does Colonel Gallagher get me communications? 
and conditions. Headquarters, Major Stovall. Yes, is Gallagher. Any word? We'll code a message to Fitzsimmons and ask for an ETA. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, he is. Just a moment, sir. Uh, General, it's General Pritchard. Excuse me, Captain. Uh, let me know right away, will you? Yes, sir. No, sir, as far as we're able to guess, they're about 15 minutes late. Well, headwinds, and they had to find a place to jettison their bomb load. Yes, sir, I'll let you know as soon as I hear. Sergeant Kamansky? Yes, sir. Get my Jeep. I'm going to sweat this out in the tower. Yes, sir. Joe, uh, Colonel. I don't think the captain had quite made her point. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm only a captain, sir. I don't require an apology. Well, I, I didn't attend one. Uh, would you like to join me at the tower? Perhaps you could brief me further on the kind of work you do. Unless that's an order, sir. I have some uh, theoretical work to do. Uh, no, it isn't an order, Captain. You go ahead with your work. Perhaps later on tonight you can give us some answers over a uh, theoretical dinner. Yes. Uh, why don't you meet at the Star and Bottle? I'll join you for a drink. Fine. Thank you, General. Captain, see you at dinner. Sir, is he trying to shut me up by being charming? Captain, we are conditioned to think of the weather as an enemy. And a woman as something to be taken to dinner and chatted with? You're a woman on a man's assignment. Now, don't be naive about the handicaps. Right. If I have to prove I'm a scientist, it won't be the first time. The group was under heavy fighter attack for almost five hours. They couldn't even take a base of action, or they would have run out of gas. How was the flak? The flak was minimal, but what's the difference? I lost seven aircraft. Seventy men. The big problem is, as I see it, the Luftwaffe has first-hand information of their own local weather conditions. They were operating at their absolute best. They had a field day. We were at our worst. There's just some way we could more accurately know about weather in advance. Here she comes. Good evening. This is my assistant, Lieutenant Rogers. Good evening, sir. Lieutenant. I thought perhaps if you would nod occasionally, it might give some additional weight to my... Um, Theoretical nonsense. <laughs> Actually, sir, uh, we've given up our crystal ball. Weather's becoming a science. We've been studying the keel problem. I think we've come up with some answers for you. Captain, I wonder if you could hold those answers in abeyance for a while, at least until after dinner. <laughs> Colonel Gallagher lost seven aircraft. But planes can be replaced, can't they? They're building so many nowadays. Captain, how would you like to come back to my base and study the problem at my level? In my hospital, my casualty reports. There are ten men in every one of those aircraft that I send up. Excuse me, I'll get us some fresh drinks. Isn't that rather uncalled for, sir? Son, I'm going to have to send him back to Kiel, and he knows it. The Nazi Navy Yards that can send their North Fleet in action against our convoys, costing us who knows how much. Every day we wait. Men, supplies, ships at sea. Well, maybe we could work more effectively with some other outfit. Your assignment is to help solve this problem. Gallagher won't let go until it is solved. Is it that much pride? Not pride. Responsibility. Whoever goes after Q is going to take a frightful beating. Gallagher won't step out because that's the kind of a buck a man like that does not pass. Colonel, that was a thoughtless remark. I just don't understand war. Maybe that's more important than your not understanding weather. Captain, I was rude. I'm sorry. Still no apologies. Thank you. We'll keep it. Thank you. Bartender, would you take these two drinks to those two very thirsty gentlemen over there?
You know, I really do have a new approach. Oh? Well, I was just getting used to the old one. When you decide to be charming, you're very good at it. I hope I've thrown you off base, because next I'm going to ask you to come fly with me tomorrow. Fly with you? It's part of the new approach. You know, we used to just sit and wait for reports on winds and pressure systems, but now we go out and look for them. I don't understand. Uh, what do you fly in? A special B-17 outfitted for weather reconnaissance. I'm going to find a better route to Kiel for you. Good. Well, here's to the better route. And uh, to that new approach of yours. several thousand pounds light because she has no armament. Those top turret guns are the only ones we have. Keep that in mind. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Normally, in this part of the world, weather fronts move from west to east. Now, I think we have one that's going in a different direction, more or less from north to south. Well, what do you do if you find it? Measure it. How high it is, how wide, how fast it's going. We have some special radar here in the nose. Would you like to see it? It's fine. into that. You'd lose them all in collisions. And you certainly can't fly over it. Neither can fighters. Now all we've got to do is figure out what time that storm's going to hit Kiel. And how you can strike while it keeps their fighters on the ground. Top turret to crew. Fighters at 7 o'clock high.
one to Archbury Tower. Weather one to Archbury Tower, over. Archbury Tower to Weather One, over. This is Weather One. Emergency traffic. We've got two rough running engines. We can't get the landing gear down. Also wounded aboard. Request instructions, over. Roger. Stand by, Weather One. I'll take her in if you like. Wheels up. Colonel, that happened to be my first taste of combat back there. This will be my third belly landing. All right, Captain. Archbury Tower to Weather One, over. This is Weather One, go ahead. Archbury Tower, runway 03, runway 03. Wind southeast 11 knots, wind southeast 11 knots, acknowledge. Roger. Runway 03, that's the same one you used this morning, so take the same approach. Captain Bates, I want you to get back to the radio compartment. Romansky, secure that wounded officer, then tell the co-pilot to come up here. I want him to help the captain with this landing. Roger, sir. get Rogers to the hospital. They feel his chances are very good. We'll give him all the help we can. Still can't believe that it happened. General Britt's waiting for a report. Do you feel up to it? Oh, I can't, Joe. Pat, time's important. No, I, I can't. Captain, you stay with him. Let him know how he's feeling. So in simple language, the mission came to nothing. Oh, I can't exactly say that, sir, because I don't know how to analyze cloud banks. Did you see a cloud bank? Yes, from a distance. As a matter of fact, she said it was the weather front she had predicted. That's about when the fighters hit us. Joe, I have less than 12 hours to make a decision about the next raid on Kiel. I have to have something to base it on. I'll take an educated guess from her. Where is she? May I use your phone, General? Sure. That's Colonel Gallagher. Would you put me through to Major Harvey Stovall, the 918th? General, what about going back up there again tomorrow? In what? Our plane was demolished. Well, she could use another one. She could get up there early enough to plot the storm and be back by 1300. All right, but I want her here by 12. Hello. Who? Kamansky. Well, I thought you brought Captain Bates to wing headquarters. Oh, I see. All right. What is it? She has rooms in Archbury. Sergeant Kamansky dropped her there about an hour ago. She was told to come here. All right, you find her. You tell her she's flying that mission tomorrow. Make it an order. Yes, sir. 
General, she's new to this, and she has had a bad day. Your attitude toward her has changed. So has yours, General. She came here with strikes against her. I was trying to smooth away. But she's here to help out on the Keel problem. We all obey orders, Joe. All of us. Yes, sir. Little activity this afternoon, huh? Yeah, a nuisance raid on the factory in Nodding Falls, sir. No trouble either. Can I open some? Oh, no, thank you. I was just looking for someone. very much by going AWOL, do you? How about buying me a drink? Joe, I don't really want any company. Well, I'm afraid my presence is somewhat official. Look, Joe, I'm going to ask for a transfer. I'm going home. Well, me too, when the war's over. I just can't do this job. You volunteered to wear that uniform, did you? Yes. Oh, yes. I was even glad for the war, for the, the way it got us into high gear, the surge of progress. You know, it's a wonderful thing in my tight little world of theory and speculation, when important people come to you open-handed with vital problems, magnificent challenges. This isn't progress. What happened to Rogers today? What nearly happened to all of us? You know, I used to love the sky. But now the sky seems dirty to me. It is. We're trying to clean it up. How, by sending boys up there to die? What do you think I'm talking about? Trying to save as many men as we possibly can. Look, Pat, day after tomorrow, I have to bomb the yards at Kiel. Oh, no. I didn't even turn in my report. Then I'll just have to depend on my own weather section. No, you can't. Not this time. How can they advise you when I can't even advise them? Nobody knows what that storm will do. You might just run right smack into it like some great tidal wave. But you said you had an idea of being able to use it. Now, why don't we go up again and try? No. Look, Joe, you're not just asking me for a simple scientific analysis. You are asking me to participate in sending men to die. And I can't. Now, maybe it has to be done. Maybe you can do it, but I cannot. Oh, Pat, it's too late. You're already involved in this. You, you can't now not participate. You say you made a decision to quit. Well, that's no decision. You're running away, and that's going to haunt you. You talk about sending men up to die. What, what about the men you might save? Stop it! You have no right to make that my responsibility. I won't accept it. Then who are you, Ben? And who gave you the power to reject it? This military way of doing things is, is so new to me. I, well, I don't quite know how to say this, but I must find some other way, some other place to do my work. It's been almost 24 years since I was shot down by a, a German fighter. I think I know the way you feel after what happened today. But, Captain, this, uh, this particular job isn't finished, is it? No, sir. I think you'll have to go up there again. I didn't manage to get enough information. I guess Colonel Gallagher told you. Colonel Gallagher was told to order you up there again. He was what? He was told to find you and give you an order. Give me the 918th. I want to speak to Colonel Gallagher. I'm in. Pat. Why didn't you tell me I was ordered to fly that mission? 
Well, you heard General Britt's other end of our telephone conversation. I just didn't think you were in any condition to fly, mentally or physically. But you didn't even give me a chance. What do you think we were talking about in the pub? War, bombing, keel, boys dying. Not about flying a weather mission. Not about you sending somebody up to do my job for me. Your weatherman hasn't got a clue what I was looking for or how to find it. Oh, I grant you that in spades. So what were you doing then? Indulging your protective instinct? Yes, exactly that. Well, I resent that. I can't reject the war. You're right about that. But I do resent your efforts to cover my weaknesses for me. I resent your protection. Pat, I wasn't protecting you. I was protecting my own group. When I met you in the pub and later in your apartment, you were still in shock. And I can't speculate with anyone who's emotionally upset. Oh, yes, I send men out to die. But the only possible way I can is with a calm and rational preparation to make it mean something. Now, that's more important to me than any individual. It has to be, man or woman. Pat, you told General Bridge you wanted to fly this mission. Why? Because if something happened up there tomorrow, and some young man died in my place. I couldn't live with myself. Pat, every man dies in his own time and place. Your time will come. Does that frighten you? Of course it frightens me. It'd be silly to say it didn't. But it's my job, Joe. I want to do it. Tell my weather officer he's standing down tomorrow. Captain Bates is going to fly the mission.
storm is. see rescue again see if there's any word i'll hold on i said 1200 joe it's 1330 i can't wait any longer it's not going to work sir my weather officer has all the information she radioed back i know the weather section of the wing intercepted it it's not enough and it doesn't tie together it was a valiant effort but... yes yes i see thank you sorry joe General, if there's any chance of rescuing her, I'm sure that she will have all the final details that we need. Well, one thing she has confirmed, there is a storm out there, and it's much too much for us to fly into. The mission for tomorrow is canceled. Stand down and wait for clear weather. That's all we can do. Yes, sir. Oh, Harvey, stay in touch with Air Sea Rescue and keep me informed, will you? Yes, Joe. Airplane ready. Yes, sir. Harvey, assemble the crew. What are you going to do, Joe? I'm going to join the search. I guess General Britt was right to scrub the keel mission. But I can't scrub Captain Bates or the people I sent her up with. Rescue. Dog yoke 48 to dog zebra 49. Army 713 out. Why is it going to last long down there? The water must be freezing. You know it. Keep your eye open for other search craft. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you for 
Columbia 2020 Vision. Army 713 to rescue 20. Come in, please. Rescue 2-0, this is Army 713. How many survivors do you have? Over. Rescue 2-0 to Army 713. Two in this raft. We'll get identifications. Stand by. Must have come down hard. Rescue 2-0 to Army 713. We have an injured gunner, Farley, and a Captain Bates. She'll talk to you. Please stand by. Oh, Farley, belly gunner. All your reports, but we couldn't add them up. So I want you to tie them together for me. Well, this whole thing goes for nothing. Over. All right, Army 713. I forgot for a minute why I was here. Just stand by till I can find some kind of a map. Pilot to radio. I want you to encode a message to Osbury Control, Major Stovall. Tell him I want the group on standby alert. We may go to Kiel tomorrow morning after all. lay on a mission without my knowledge? General, the only reason I asked you to come here, sir, is because I did not have time to go to you. And you want me to jump into this on the strength of your guesswork? We're begging the General's pardon, sir, but it was you who persuaded me. You said it was scientific. From you, it's guesswork. When Captain Bates gets back, I'll listen to her. I'm sorry, sir, but they went to pick up the rest of the survivors and drop them off in Scotland. She won't be back in time. And you're willing to gamble this on the basis of a radio conversation with her? General... I have combined what she transmitted before they ditched with what she told me during our radio conversation. I now know the speed and direction of the storm, its tailwinds, its crosswinds, its ceilings, its temperature. All right. How do you put it to use? Sir, I thought we'd go north, hook around, pick up the tailwinds and ride it in. Now, she said the storm would hit Kiel at 0600 and pass by noon. Now, that'll keep their fighters grounded and jam their radar. Now, I thought I would adjust my takeoff time to come in just behind the storm. Now, I could be bombing before they'd even know I was there. They'd never know it hit them. All right. My weather section confirms your calculations. I'll approve it. Thank you, sir. Navigator to pilot. Our corrected ground speed is 350 miles an hour, sir. Man, look at that airspeed. Can you believe that? Well, the lady promised us a tailwind. She sure did. Bob, 
Someday you can tell your grandchildren you once flew a 160 mile an hour airplane at 350. And they probably won't know the difference anyway. Can't be correct, sir. Just can't. You'll be catching up to the storm. It may not be accurate, Sandy, but it's fun. This is where she said to leave it. We're going to start our descent. By the time we get down, we should be over keel. Sandy, fire those flares. Yes, Take sir. it up to your turret. Pilot to Bombardier, PDI Senate. It's all yours. Make it good. Bombardier, Roger. Bombs away in 10 seconds. No flag. Not a fighter in sight. Well, that that I missed them. But there must be fighters near, or we would have flak by now. the results. But from what I saw at interrogation, I judge it to be something like what Joshua did to Jericho. Oh, uh, excuse me, Joe. There's something I forgot to say to Major Stowe. Captain, you certainly deserve a medal. But what's more important, I didn't lose one single man on this mission. Yes, sir. Army 713. Over and out. Pat, if I seemed unconcerned when we picked you up, I, I had to have that information in a hurry. I surprised myself. I was feeling very feminine. I wanted somebody to care if I was alive or dead. But we're both scientists, aren't we? Mine is weather and yours is war, and we're both committed, so... Pat. I want to thank you for helping to save my life and the lives of my men. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. And where are you going? To London. Do my job from the desk. Oh. Well, then I guess from time to time you'll be sending me weather reports. Mostly foggy and cool, but occasional periods of warmth and sunshine. Well, then, on the first sunshiny day, perhaps I should come down and start paying you back some of that fortune I owe you. That sounds like a highly workable solution. Oh, Pat. I just realized something. It's a sunshiny day. <laughs> 